The Best of the West, now in its 18th season of production, has produced over 300 episodes since it debuted in 2003. As the pioneers of long-range hunting television, we filmed some incredible moments over the years. Bringing the best of Western big game hunting into your living room each week has been our goal from day one. Built in Cody, Wyoming, our custom Best of the West rifles are field-tested and proven as the most accurate hunting rifle systems on the market. Combined with the simplicity of Huskama optics, if you can dial it, then you can dump it. The days of Kentucky windage or a sophisticated wild-ass guess are long behind us. Custom turrets provide pinpoint accuracy and take out all the guesswork. As your long-range hunting authority, believe us when we say we're just getting started. On this episode of The Best of the West, we're privileged to be hunting on the Daily Ranch. This 100,000-acre working cattle ranch turns out only a handful of landowner tags each year, and The Best of the West has been honored to be on the shortlist two years in a row. Last year, Team Huskama went three for three with some outstanding Wyoming mule deer bucks. Guided by Tad Daly and Kellen Smith on their family-owned ranch, it's a target-rich environment all to yourself. So Daily Ranch Outfitters had the pleasure of getting to hunt with the best of the West again this year. The cool thing about this hunt this year was everybody had antelope tags and we didn't get to do that last year when they came on the hunt. They, uh, they were just here hunting mule deer. But the nice thing about our operation is, you know, the antelope hunting is a really good way to break up the mule deer hunting. When the mule deer bed down for the day, we can then switch over to the antelope and then go back to the mule deer in the evening. And where we're at in northern Campbell County, north of Gillette, Wyoming, we're really in one of the, the best places in the world to hunt antelope. The majority of antelope in, in the whole world live in Wyoming, and the majority of those antelope are in northeast Wyoming. Now, if you've never really had the opportunity to judge an antelope, you can't really appreciate how challenging it is some tips we try to educate the hunters on to look at to help them judge what we're, we're seeing is uh, always if the antelope can prong higher up his main beam, uh, that makes for a better score. Um, clearly how big the prong is and how well he hooks over um, are two characteristics we concentrate on to judge a trophy antelope. Two other things that people don't really think about when looking at antelope are we look for ivories and a tip of an antelope horn can be polished from them polishing their horns. And that's kind of a cool feature if you can find it. Really the most important thing I look at is the quality of cape. Uh, and that's a good way to age antelope so we know we're managing our antelope. We have notoriously very dark capes in this part of the country. Uh, meaning their faces are very black. They're just beautiful animals. And so the blacker the cape, and you look how clean that is in relation to the other colors on the animal. I'm a big fan of dark, dark faces. So that's what gets my trips my trigger. And I try to educate the hunter on why that's important because you know, if you're gonna take your trophy home and you wanna display it, that's just a, one of the greatest trophies in the world is a beautiful antelope. I'm Christine Michaelitz from Southern Minnesota, and I'm here at the Daily Ranch for my first ever big game hunt. Wyoming is a gorgeous state. The variety of terrain is breathtaking. And being in this part of the country, the scenery is vast, the animals are gorgeous. It's just been a great experience out here. Over the past few years, I've uh, developed a real love for shooting firearms. Uh, shotgun sports, handgun shooting, just getting into rifle shooting. So my husband, Joe, is a longtime avid hunter, avid outdoorsman. He introduced me to Best of the West rifles with Huskama Optics, and I became a fan immediately. He's taken me to the range. I've made some nice long range shots and um, finally felt I was comfortable enough to give hunting a try. So the first morning we set out, we spent some time driving around the property, looking for animals, found a beautiful group of antelope. Um, there was a nice buck in there, and Tad, our guide, 
said, this one's a shooter. And I knew I was up and the excitement and the nervousness, the anxiety, knowing that this was gonna be a film hunt my first time out, I was so nervous, so scared, but so excited. So we pulled over, we, we stepped out, we got things walked over, set up, and then they started walking away. So I learned really quickly that antelope don't stay put for very long. And uh, after four times setting up, getting my scope on them, watching them walk off, I thought, is this really gonna happen? And then we got into an area where they were heading and just over a hillside, we saw the horns of the buck start coming towards us. And he stood there, presented a great shot for me. Nice shot. Did I get it? You dropped him. No, hey. yeah. <laughs> Good shot, Christine. And oh, I was so excited. I was so happy. I, I got a nice, just a nice um, shot on this antelope. So for my first experience ever, couldn't have been better. As I approached the animal, I, I just felt overwhelmed with gratitude just to be here in this place, in their environment. You know, he dropped just real quickly and all that anxiety was gone. And I was just able to, to soak up that moment. And for my first animal, it, it just felt great. Congratulations, Thank that you. was awesome. That Thank was fantastic. You. you made a great shot. Uh, I think we snuck on these critters, four, five different snakes, and uh, they were slippery, but we stuck with it. And what was it, 310? 310. 310 we shot. Beautiful, didn't move a step, perfect. Thank you. I love hunting Wyoming. I've hunted Wyoming off and on my whole life and um, there's just something special about Wyoming and there's something really extra special about the Daly Ranch. I can't really say enough good things about it. There's a hundred thousand acres here and there's such a variety of terrain. I mean it was 80, 84, 82 degrees uh, the first couple days, not a lot of wind. So we actually were spotting, having to really uh, work at it and do a lot of glassing and spot animals that were bedded down and of course they're in the shade, they're under trees, they're trying to stay cool and of course to do that they're awful hidden. We were able every day to, to see and spot a number of animals uh, and I just don't know of all the places I've hunted, I've never experienced a property this large with so much accessibility to be able to literally hunt all day and watch and spot animals all day, even in the heat. We finally saw this nice buck by himself, uh, a few hundred yards you know, off the, the trail we were driving on. And so we got out, got set up, and the winds were really gusting. I mean, it was probably 20 miles an hour steady, gusting 30. Uh, it was really a good test for the Huskama Advantage, which is our, uh, the optics, the Huskama uh, scopes have uh, not only the elevation turret, but they also have a patented windage hold on the turret. And the way the crosshairs are set up, you just literally, um, based on the wind, you know, it's really simple math. The wind holdover is based on a 10 mile hour crosswind. So this uh, antelope was about 310 yards out. Normally I would hold about a minute and a half based on a 10 mile hour crosswind but the winds were 20 plus. So I just held three minutes into the wind and pulled the trigger. It all happened pretty fast. I hit that antelope exactly where I aimed. There was only about six inches of wind drift, but that's still quite a bit of wind drift at 300 yards. Everything came together real quick and had a very successful outcome. And I bagged a nice, uh, nice antelope. You know, when you shoot an animal out there, it looks good through the binoculars, but you never really know until you walk up on it. And it was really fun walking up on this antelope because it had a little more mass and it and had a little more height than I had envisioned through the binoculars. I was really, really happy with it. Of course, my wife was there with me and we got to share the experience. So it was really, really fun. After the uh, antelope hunt, we were able to switch gears and uh, focus on the mule deer hunt. 
Um, we went up to another piece of our property where, you know, we don't do a lot of hunting up there just for various reasons, but we really like to kind of save that for the deer habitat and make sure the deer are in good shape up there. But we found a great spot there and we're able to get on these bucks early in the morning where they were out feeding and we stocked them for quite a while. They, they had moved out their feeding area and we're headed up to some bedding areas. And that was a good opportunity to sit down with Christine and Joe and talk about why those were trophy animals. And we looked at so many bucks before that to kind of give them the education of what makes a mature trophy mule deer. The quality of bucks that we passed on for various reasons is part of our management program in the context of we don't want to take younger deer. Um, we passed on some really good four and a half, maybe five and a half year old bucks, but the bucks we ultimately settled on, they're ancient. So Tad brought us over to another part of the property and um, we saw some nice bucks moving around, uh, watched them a while, followed them a little bit. And uh, again, just that uh, anxiety, that anticipation of having an opportunity to uh, get my first deer was pretty exciting, but they were moving. It was, it was pretty early morning and we had to follow them around a little bit, did some glassing, tried to identify where they were heading, how we could get set up for a, a nice, easy shot for me. And he did a great job. When we spotted them down on a hillside, we were able to set up in a perfect location. And uh, there were actually two gorgeous bucks. So I had my choice and I had them both in my scope and um, I decided to, to select the one that had a, a real interesting rack. It was just real high, just beautiful buck. And he stood still. I, I just, I, I was so nervous for myself. I really didn't want to mess this up. He came out, gave me a great shot. I took it. You just dropped. Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> So when I got that shot on that buck and he dropped so quickly, we were watching his friend right nearby him and uh, he didn't really flinch. So we realized my husband Joe still had a tag to fill. It was excitement for a moment, we got my buck, but yet we had an opportunity presented to us like immediately to keep this excitement going for Joe. So I rolled out, he rolled in, I don't know how many times this has happened, but we call it the daily double. Here I am on my first big game hunt with my wife, and within a couple minutes of each other, we both drop a, a deer, and I didn't even use my gun. I mean, she had her gun in the tripod, and she rolled out of the way, and I moved in, and I don't know how to explain it, but it was extremely exciting. We were ecstatic. It was almost like a, a dream. We had to keep thinking, did this just happen? This experience for me has been life-changing. I am married to a hunter outdoorsman. He's enjoyed this his whole life. We've got three grown children. They all enjoy it. I was able to hear the stories, see the pictures, celebrate with them over the years, but it was never something that I felt inclined to get out and do myself. Even if I wasn't to shoot and hunt myself, just to, to come along and observe this would have been great. But now that I've really experienced this firsthand, I can't wait to do it again. When we walked over to my buck, uh, I was also blown away as we uh, got closer to him. We saw a four point antler shed just like within a few yards of where he dropped. So it was just the most unique, like amazing experience. And to have all these things line up, it was just so cool, so cool and so exciting. I'm also really grateful that I was able to experience this with my husband. We're empty nesters now. So I think this whole next chapter for us is gonna look a lot different than I thought it might. And I look forward to doing this more with him. We're, we're best friends and to get out here and enjoy 
just nature and, and being together and you know, share the pursuit of something and then to be able to celebrate together afterwards, it's really cool. So ladies, if you're watching and this is something you've been considering, do it, try it, you'll love it. We accomplished the, uh, the daily double this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just a fantastic morning. We, uh, we worked hard to get on them a couple different times, but the setup we ended up getting was just absolutely perfect. Christine shot her deer and dropped it in his tracks and uh, it just couldn't back Joe off. He wanted to shoot a bigger deer than he shot last year and I said, well, that's him. And so we shot him and both yeah. of them, just great deer, beautiful deer. Yeah, pretty fun. Feels good, doesn't it? Feels great. <laughs> thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. Now, I'd really like to thank, you know, Tad Daly and, and, and Kellen. I mean, these guys are awesome people, so fun to hunt with. And, uh, but yet, they're great stewards. I, I like the word steward because, you know, they could probably shoot 100 animals a year off this property real easy, but they don't. They take a dozen to 18 deer a year is all off this property. And I can't really say enough about Best of the West and Huskama Optics. They are so accurate, you know, they are, they're so into perfection and quality and they won't let a rifle leave their shop unless it shoots a half minute or better. And I have a lot of rifles that shoot eighth minute, quarter minute. I mean, we're talking inch and a half groups at, at a thousand yards. We had four tags, we filled four tags in two days with four casings, four shots, four animals. You know, you can't really ask for much more than that. Uh, here we are, you know, we both dropped these deer and it was fun, you know, really just putting the deer together and, and taking pictures of our, of our two bucks that we just doubled on together. And it kind of, uh, you know, you can call it karma, you can call it whatever you want, but it, it kind of resembles our life. We're just very blessed people and I never dreamed that our first hunt together would, would work out so well. Thanks for watching this episode of The Best of the West. Be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for all the latest long-range hunting adventures.